Thank you, Senator, and thank you, Senator Mathis, for introducing this bill and your committee. I'm Greg Botenhammer with the Iowa Hospital Association. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone in the room uh, that the Iowa Hospital Association opposes this move to managed care. So we certainly support this legislation that you brought forward today. You know, fundamentally, uh, it is our position that managed care does nothing to transform a health care system. And we can argue about its presence in other states around the country, and Iowa is not the first state to uh, consider entering to, into a managed care arrangement. That actually gives us great history because there are no independent studies out there that would demonstrate that managed care has lowered cost or improved quality uh, anywhere in the country. The studies that do exist that would suggest that come from the managed care companies themselves. So in our state, we believe that we should return to the work that was done in creating the Iowa Health and Wellness Plan, which supported things like provider-led accountable care organizations and requirements that Medicaid beneficiaries get annual physicals and health risk assessments, which was working. We've seen the cost curve turning down. We know that accountable care organizations could have bent that cost curve. Wellmark itself uh, had a news release last summer that indicated that their accountable care organization had saved over $17 million in the first year of operation. So rather than scrap the good work that you all did just three years ago to create the Iowa Health and Wellness Plan and to find an Iowa solution to actually improve uh, folks' quality of life across the state, we believe we need to return to the model that you created at that time and abandon this ill-conceived proposal to turn over our tax dollars to insurance companies from out of state. Uh, th thank you very much, Greg. And I will note that in the bill, we do call for that very um, process to realign our Medicaid system, going back to accountable care organizations, integrated health homes, and other uh, transformational measures that we have been, that we were engaged in, rather than a capitated managed care model. So thank you very much. Anyone else that'd like to get up and speak for or against the piece, the legislation before us? You are a quiet group. I never dreamt this. <laughs> Tony, would you like to talk? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Senators, would you like to have any discussion among yourselves on this? I'd be happy to, Madam Chair. Thank you. I'm going to vote in favor of this, uh, of this bill for uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, last week was uh, a week where i heard from a doctor at my medical clinic was ready to just hang it up what's happening with and this this is nothing related to managed care but it's what's happened at the federal level um, uh, for the most part and the regulations that are coming down that simple common inexpensive drugs are requiring more and more pre-authorization taking doctors times taking nursing staff times you know um, you know extending their times that they have to spend on an individual patient's case when that used to be fairly easy and i'm talking about uh, uh, blood thinners a, a common medication uh, warfarin for example uh, you get up to bradaxa to that level and you're, you're talking a real expense but the common once and it was just that the director of the clinic called me and said we're tearing our hair out around here and i live in a rural area that's very very important we have a we have a a, a good system and access and i don't want to see that you know decline at all um, another call i received and and it was uh, you know was from a hospital administrator in my area in northwest iowa uh, who is who, whose, whose people are trying as hard as possible to sign agreements with all three of the active managed care organizations. Uh, there, was a, there was an article in the newspaper, front page, about this. We're trying, we're trying, we're trying. Uh, it leaves doubts there. But it, more than anything is to hear from advocates uh, as well as those receiving services right now who are confused, who are afraid. And I just believe that at the very least we need to slow the process down. Um, uh, perhaps we should go in this direction. I'm going to support it to give it a little extra push. 
and to give it an extra push because I want this to be a bipartisan approach to, to, to the issue. I, you know, there's no point in us arguing on political ideologies ab about this. Uh, we need to look at, um, you know, exactly what's going on here and remember that the patients and the clients come first. And I would uh, especially mentioned as well, not just people with chronic illnesses or, or just getting treatments who are Medicaid eligible for, for, for just common uh, illnesses, but the, the people with disabilities. Uh, that's really important to me and my area because we really have a culture of recognizing in Northwest Iowa that those people especially uh, have dignity and they have privacy uh, and, and, and that their issues are, are, are as important as any of us here. And I'll, I'll mention one third thing. We are in a way insulated as legislators. I can't say enough about the health insurance that we have. It's been a subject of dispute whether we should have it or whatever, but you know, I think all of us, I know, I know those people here at the table, the senators here, uh, spend a lot of time talking to their constituents. And, uh, you know, it, because we know that we really want to, we, we, we want to learn more about it, the, the details of what they're having to go through. So that's, that's just what I have to say. Uh, I have a lot more to say about it too, but those are just two, two examples of what happened last week that, that said to me, you know, you really need to join in the subcommittee, which I, I, I don't know how, how we're all going to vote, but I will be voting yes on the bill. So I thank you for the opportunity to say a few things about that and try to steer us in the right direction. David, Senator Johnson, thank you very much. Senator Wilhelm. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> like myself, I've been here from constituents at home, and I want to get a couple of the example, examples on the constituent side. Um, Friday morning, I spent 45 minutes on the phone talking to a constituent of mine who has a very complicated medical background. And because I live so close to the Minnesota border, she does all of her doctoring up at the Mayo Clinic. Quick, easy, but also geared to her sp specific conditions that she has. She spent 45 minutes not, uh, not knowing and, and almost near tears. So once again, thank you, Sen Senator Yoakum, uh, Madam Chair, and I'll be happy to sign the report. Okay. Um, so just let me close this. I know both Senator Johnson and Wilhelm, you've done a great job of explaining why we need to move this legislation forward. And, and I happen to not just be a legislator, but also a mom with a kiddo with disabilities. And so I, I know firsthand what many parents in the state are going through right now in trying to figure out what is the best course for our kids. I can tell you that as of today, none of my daughter's medical providers in our community have signed contracts. I can tell you that none of her waiver providers to date have signed contracts. Um, so, so I, like many other parents, are in this conundrum on what to do and which managed care company to even select um, that might be able to meet the needs of our children. Um, I want to make it very clear that, that my opposition to capitated managed care was nothing political, was not political. In fact, if, other, if the evidence from other states that have gone down this pathway had proved that health outcomes had improved, that expansion um, of health care uh, was there in our communities, if it actually at least stabilized the cost, I wouldn't just be a cheerleader. I'd be advocating and doing everything in my power to make it happen. But lessons learned from other states, from my own experience, from the thousands, literally thousands of Iowans that have contacted all of us at this table by email and phone, tell me that this state is not ready, nor do I believe that a capitated managed care model is the best model for people with very complicated health issues. So um, I too will be signing the report. I want to thank Senator Mathis for um, bringing this bill before us as our committee chair chair and um, that's it. I'm going to sign and I'm going to pass. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then the intent is to bring this up at the human resources meeting. It'll be on the agenda for the next meeting at 3.30, correct? Okay. Or 4.30, or 4.30 this afternoon, I'm sorry. There's another meeting I have at 3.30.
Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure everyone understands that. With that, the meeting is adjourned and we have bipartisan support to move this legislation forward. Thank you everyone for coming.